Higher Universe Pictures. The reason I'm making this video blog is because lately there's been some really weird stuff happening in my apartment and I'm starting to think that it's haunted. My closet door and my bedroom door are constantly moving, like several times a day. <laughs> Definite poltergeist activity. This all started happening as soon as my life began falling apart. I had a fight with my mom and we haven't talked in weeks. I had a fight with my friend Blythe, and now she's messaging me all the time, threatening me, and shit-talking me on social media. I saw Blythe in my neighborhood yesterday. I wonder if she's spying on me. That's Blythe. She's in my neighborhood again. What's she doing? She sent me this. She's freaking out, calling me a stupid bitch. I can handle that. She said worse, but this last thing, I hope you're sleeping well at night. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> Maybe I'm reading too much into it. She always was into that witch stuff. She brought me to this seance with some people a couple of months ago back when we were still friends. It was stupid. Nothing happened. This guy was pretending to channel a dead relative. <laughs> They're so full of shit. I'm so glad she's out of my life. I'm not even going to respond to her message. I was watching TV tonight and it felt like there was somebody watching me. My friend Dan came over last night to comfort me and he... He slept on the couch so that I'd have somebody to be with. <laughs> oh, he was the best friend I've ever had. The whole night, it's felt like someone's been following me around the apartment. Okay, so this is unexpected. I just got a text from Blythe apologizing for everything. That's a first. But listen to this. I wish I could stop what's happening, but I can't. I was cooking in the kitchen and I heard a voice say, no. I ran out of the apartment and I just now got up the courage to come back. <coughs> Shit, the stove! <sighs> okay, well, I feel like a complete idiot. I set the fire alarm off because I left my food cooking in the stove and it burned. Dan still hasn't texted me back. I messaged him again because maybe he forgot, but he's not replying. It's not like him. I'm kind of worried. So, the knocking started up again, all over the walls and the roof. At one point, I just yelled, STOP! And it actually did. It was quiet for like, maybe a half hour. Then it started up again. <sighs> See? I'm not crazy. So, I uh, researched paranormal investigators in the area, and I actually found one that seemed pretty cool. I emailed her, and I told her about what's been going on. Hopefully, she can help me get rid of this. Shit! Shit. That was a knock on my front door. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna keep the camera running while I go look. That was my neighbor from next door asking me to stop knocking on the walls. I told her it wasn't me. Oh, great. Now on top of everything else, my haunted life is affecting other people. The last thing I need is to get evicted on top of being unemployed and broke. Oh my- SHUT UP! I finally got a text back from Dan, but he's being really weird. He says he's busy. I don't know what he's busy with. He's like he's in school, but he doesn't have a job. All he does is smoke weed and play video games. I have a job interview tomorrow at a clothing store in Southgate. If I get the job, I'm going to save up my money and move to a different apartment. Hi guys, no paranormal shit happened. I just wanted to let you know that the job interview went really well. They really seemed to like me and they did everything short of offering me the job. They asked when I could start and they said that they'll call me tomorrow. Oh, I'm so excited. I can finally get back to having a normal life and meet some new friends. The apartment is now freezing cold. 
It was fine a few hours ago when I made that video. Now it feels like I'm living in a frickin' igloo. First it was too hot, now... That job I interviewed for, um, they emailed me back and said they went with someone else. I'm not sure what happened. I emailed them back and asked if there was a particular reason I didn't get the job. I was sure I had it. Okay, check this out. That store wrote me back. This is Erin, the woman who interviewed me. This is her response to me inquiring about why I didn't get the job. Honestly, we can't even believe you have the audacity to ask us why you didn't get the job after what you did. Please do not contact us again. What did I do? Have they gone insane? Jesus, what the hell is going on? It was nothing. Okay, bye for now. So, apparently the haunting isn't over like I'd hoped. Look at this. I heard a smash and found this. I did all my dishes yesterday, so all my glasses were clean and put away in the cupboard. So somehow, the cupboard door opened, the glass fell out, smashed, and then the cupboard door closed again on its own. I finally heard back from the paranormal investigator, Adeline is her name. She sent me a shitload of questions. She probably gets all kinds of weirdos contacting her, so she has to filter them out. So I tried to answer her questions without sounding crazy. I really hope she responds, because I realize this is not going to go away on its own. This is his latest response to my message. I said, Dan, I'm really worried about you. I'd like to see you in person so we can talk things out. We've always been so close, and now all of a sudden you seem distant, and I don't know why. Did something happen? Did I offend you somehow? Are you angry with me? I just want to make sure you're okay. If you need someone to talk to, you know I'm here for you. Let's get together for coffee. Please message me back. I hope you're doing well. Then, the next day, yesterday, he responds, Hi. Oh my god, okay, so I recorded myself sleeping and watched this. Fuck. I put some baby powder in the hall. If that ghost kid crawls by again, he'll leave prints in it. <sighs> okay, it's morning. I'm, I'm totally hungover. I got drunk by myself. Wow, I'm so cool. Life is so awesome. I left the camera running last night. Nothing happened. The baby powder is still there. I accidentally walked through it on the way to the washroom, but there's no handprints or anything. Something paranormal did happen, though. Last night, the bottle was full. And now it's empty. Ooh, how did that happen? <laughs> Fuck. Uh, I'm such a loser. I've been reading about hauntings and other people's experiences. The consensus is that the phenomena can't physically hurt you, even if it is scary. So, maybe I can learn to live with it. Oh, yeah. Uh, Dan's parents messaged me yesterday to see what's going on with him. He hasn't been talking to them either. I told them he's ignoring me too. Adeline, the paranormal lady, finally emailed me back and said she could come meet me, but she's not free until next Thursday. So, I guess I have to just fend for myself until then. I just got back from the grocery store and I ran into this lady outside the building who lives on my floor, Mrs. Pearson. I don't know her first name. Uh, she's lived here for a long time, so I asked her about previous tenants in my apartment. I asked her if there's ever been any kids living here. She said, uh, that there was a mother and her son who lived here for a couple months several years ago. I asked her if the boy died. She said no and gave me a weird look. Now that I think of it, I should have asked her for what their name was. I could have looked the mom up on Facebook and seen if there was a picture of the boy. What the fuck? Okay, you guys gotta see this. I'm gonna switch to my phone. It happened. Again. Shit! That drawer just opened on its own. Let's see if it happens again. I don't know why this thing likes dishes so much. I just wish it would stop breaking things I have to pay to replace. 
I can't sleep. Uh, I'm so fucking scared. At least I don't feel that physical presence here anymore like I did before. Knock on wood. <sighs> I know it sounds lame, but talking to the camera gives me comfort. Sorry, I, I wish I could make these videos more entertaining for you guys, but unfortunately, that's up to the ghost. Or ghosts. What do you think? <laughs> I decided I needed to get out of the house. Melinda and I are going for drinks. It's Friday night after all. Okay, I'm home from the bar now. I'm pretty drunk. I barely had to spend any money because these guys at the bar kept buying us drinks all night. I had a pretty good time though. They helped take my mind off of things. Just a few minutes ago, I was um, eating pizza in the living room and these papers that were on the table blew off. But the window was open, so I'm just gonna assume that that's what it was. This is weird. I was cleaning my storage closet when I found this behind some boxes. What the fuck is this? It looks like my hair. Nobody's been in my apartment lately that I know of. Dan was before he started acting weird, but he never went into my storage room. Is this some sort of witchcraft shit that someone, someone being Blythe, put here to put a curse on me? I've been doing some reading into it, and that would explain a lot. She was pissed off at me, and she's into that weird stuff. If it was her, how did she get into my apartment? And how did she get my hair, if it is my hair? Well, I'm not keeping it here. If this is the cause of all this haunting shit, maybe getting rid of it will stop it. So hopefully this is the end of our little adventure, and getting rid of this thing will end my nightmare I'm living. Bye bye. Done. See you at home. Do you guys hear that? It sounds like a baby crying. It sounds like it's coming from inside the apartment. Fuck, where the fuck is that coming from? It stopped. Nothing weird happened after the baby crying last night. I ran into Mrs. Pearson. She doesn't know the names of the people who used to live here, so that's a dead end. Uh, she did say that a couple with a baby moved upstairs, so that explains the baby crying. Although, I swear it sounded like it was coming from inside the apartment. Anyways, I thought I'd update you guys before I'm going to check on Dan. Um, see you in a bit. Okay, I just came back from Dan's house. His car was gone, but his front door was unlocked, which is not like Dan at all, believe me. I went in and called his name. I looked around everywhere, but I couldn't find him. All of his stuff was there, including his phone. He never leaves home without his phone. Who does? I texted his mom, and they haven't heard from him since they messaged me the other day. So, I don't know where he is. Should I call his school and ask if he's been showing up? Like, do I file a missing persons report? I don't want to seem like I'm overreacting. Like, maybe he's fine. Maybe he just went to the store and I broke into his house. He's a grown man. He doesn't have to talk to me if he doesn't want to. Just some sort of explanation would be nice. I just have this really bad feeling about it. There's a guy standing at the end of the hall, staring at my apartment. I'll see if I can get him on camera. Who the fuck is that? Why is he staring at my apartment? If he's still here in 10 minutes, I'm calling the cops. Okay, the guy's gone, but I'm worried he's just standing right around the corner. Should I go out and look? Like, I have to leave my apartment sooner or later. Okay. Oh. 
phew. Oh my god. Oh shit! Slightly. I called building security. Of course the guy was gone by the time they got here. I have no idea who he was. They searched the entire building. They said that they'd keep an eye out, but I should call them if he ever comes back. <laughs> Wonderful. Now on top of everything happening inside my apartment, I have to be afraid of leaving it. I woke up this morning to this text from Melinda. Hey Jen, do you by any chance have my ID? It's missing from my wallet, and I remember you were looking in my wallet when we went to the bar. Just wondering if you took it by mistake. Uh, no, Melinda, I didn't take your fucking ID. I went into your wallet because you asked me to grab you some cash because you were too busy practically making out with a guy at our table. So, no, I don't have it. So, I went out and bought a cross. I'm not religious or anything, but my views on life and the universe have changed drastically with everything that's been going on. I'm not expecting it to help much, but it's worth a shot. <laughs> there. Now I'm protected. <laughs> you guys hear that giggling? It sounds like a little girl. I can't tell where it's coming from, though. coming from inside the living room. Wait. <laughs> Something just ran into my room. Okay, I'm gonna go check it out. If I see anything, you guys are gonna see it at the same time. Melinda. What's she doing here? I'll try to get this on camera for all you nosy people on the internet. Hey, I what's just, going on? I just wanted to see what you were up to. Someone led me to the view then. Oh, okay. What is going on? Ah, nothing. Just making a little video. Say hi. Oh. Hey. <laughs> We're not live, are we? No. What's it for? Uh, nothing, just for fun. No, I don't like being on camera. Oh, okay. I can't believe you stole my ID, you fucking thief. Melinda, why would I steal your ID? Well, I don't know. It was under your couch, and you're the only one who lives here. How do I know you didn't just put it there yourself? You think I would steal my own ID? I don't know. I didn't put it there, okay? Just get out of my sight. You're just a fucking liar, and you always have been. Just get out of my fucking apartment, you stupid piece of shit! God damn. Fuck! Did you hear that? So we're sitting here, just hanging out, I get up, go to the washroom, come back, and she's holding her ID. The one she accused me of taking? She said she found it under the couch, which is a total lie since I didn't take it. Obviously, she put it there herself. Fuck! But why would she do that? It doesn't make any sense. If she had her ID this whole time, why would she bring it over here and accuse me of taking it? <sighs> oh well. Another friend lost. Oh my god, you guys. This is insane. I started hearing that knocking again, and I started knocking back, like, trying to communicate with it. And I think it's working. Watch. One knock means yes, and two means no. Okay? Is my name 
Genesis. See? Is my name Darlene? See? Uh, do I live in London? Do I live in Australia? Do I live in Edmonton? This is crazy. Proof that it's intelligent, though. Hmm. Okay. Are you alive? Are you dead? Are you a ghost? Are you a demon? So what are you then? Oh, right. I guess just yes or no questions. Um, did you intend to haunt my apartment on purpose? Uh, did you intend to haunt me on purpose? Fuck. Do you intend to hurt me? Are you choosing to refrain from answering that question? Wonderful. Uh, will you ever leave? Could I ever do anything to get you to leave? Well, that's good news. <laughs> Uh, could you leave me alone? <gasps> Shit! Okay, so I'm back. This has taken a turn for the crazy. This is not just some random shit happening. This is a thing that can think. <sighs> I am still not exactly sure what it is. It said it's not a ghost or a demon, so... The good thing is, Adeline, the paranormal lady, is coming by tomorrow, so hopefully she can give me some advice or tell me how to get rid of it. The cupboard just opened on its own. Fine, just don't break anything. Hey, how are you? I'm good, how about you? Good, thank you for coming. My pleasure. So I'm a little disappointed with how that meeting went. I was hoping she could give me something on how to actually get rid of it. She did say one thing, she said I had to stop communicating with it. So that means no more knocking or talking to it. She said it's something that people in her field call a parasite. So it's like a demon in the fact that it feeds off of negative feelings and energy. Now I know, I know, it sounds ridiculous, but after everything you've seen, is it really that impossible? She asked if I was religious. I said, other than this, I wasn't religious at all and I didn't belong to any particular church. She said, sometimes if you're religious, doing a cleansing or an exorcism can, can help, but sometimes if you're not, it can make it worse. So basically I waited all that time and she was useless. I went to Dan's. 
I don't know if he's even been back since I last went there. His car is still not there, his door is still unlocked, his place looks exactly the same, and I swear I heard footsteps following me, but there was no sign of him. So my cross is feeling really hot, like, like way too hot, unnaturally hot. I have to put it down. Cross got even hotter, so I lowered it into a glass of cold water and it sizzled. Here, I'll show you again. It did it more last time. A couple of new updates. First off, I called my mom because I was lonely and a man answered. Now, that in itself isn't that big of a deal. Maybe she got a new boyfriend and he answered her phone for her. But what was scary was that he sounded exactly like my dad. My dad who died when I was 12. Uh, the second thing is the cross. Remember when I put it in the water and it sizzled? What the hell is that? It doesn't smell like anything. I don't know if that's good or bad. It must mean it doesn't like the cross, so I think I'll keep wearing it. Guess we're at war now. I got another job interview! <laughs> It's for a receptionist position at a office. It's pretty close to here on Calgary Trail. Okay, no word from Dan, obviously. And I got a text from Melinda asking if I was outside her house last night, which I wasn't. I'm almost starting to detest this melodrama more than the haunting, almost. Okay, that was a hard interview, probably the hardest I've ever had. They kept asking me scenario questions like, what would you do if you were dealing with a customer who started to become abusive and stuff like that? Kind of makes me wonder what kind of job I'm applying for. <laughs> they told me that they have lots of other people to interview and that they'd contact me. So I guess I'll just wait. And Blythe, Blythe texted me. She asked me how I was doing. Like, um, you know what you put me through, you bitch? <laughs> like, Part of me wants to contact her and ask her if she's responsible for this hell that I'm going through, and the other part of me knows I should keep my distance. I just got a message from Dan. It says, we should meet. That's it. So I replied, where? He said, parking lot of St. Patty's, 11 p.m. That's the bar where we first met, but it's a strange place to meet in the parking lot, not in the bar. I had this little voice in my head screaming, don't go, but, but I have to. He's my friend and I need to know what's going on out of sheer morbid curiosity. It's 1120. I've been waiting here for 20 freaking minutes and there's no sign of Dan. I texted and called him, nothing. Is that him? There's some dudes staring at me from the other side of the parking lot. Pretty creepy, dude, whoever you are. Well, I'm pretty sure that wasn't him, but I don't feel safe out here anymore, so. I'm gonna go. Okay, I was awoken this morning by a phone call. I got the job. Oh, <laughs> yay for me. Oh, I start the day after tomorrow. <sighs> Money problems, bye bye. Ooh, cooped up in this apartment 24-7, bye-bye. New friends, hopefully. <sighs> this seems like a new start. Okay guys, this is how bad my social situation has gotten. So I have this friend, Tamara. We weren't really that close, but we were kind of friends when I started school. So we haven't really talked any in the last like year or so. Anyway, so I wanted to go out and celebrate and have some actual human contact, so I messaged her and asked her if she wanted to go out tonight. And she said she was busy. But then just now, she posted this on Facebook. She went to the frickin' bar. That's what she meant by being busy. Like, why couldn't she invite me? There were a bunch of people there. <sighs> Even Mike, <laughs> Bly's ex-boyfriend. I don't see why I couldn't tag along. Like, is this seriously something that wrong with me? People are such assholes sometimes. Except you guys. 
You guys are awesome. <laughs> Go away. I'm ignoring you. Anyway, so I was thinking, maybe I should just go down to the bar. Okay, they're leaving. A bunch of assholes. Who's that girl? Is that Mike's new girlfriend or something? Looks like she's a bitch to him too. So, I decided I'm going to celebrate with or without other members of the human race. So, I went out and bought myself a bottle of wine. And I'm going to sit here and enjoy it. And no one is going to stop me. <laughs> Anyone watching is welcome to join me. To my new job. Hi guys, drinking a whole bottle of wine by yourself doesn't make you an alcoholic, does it? What if you uh, give up on using a glass after the second one and just drink straight from the bottle? No? I'm good? Okay, good to know. I found this video on Tamara's profile. Say hi, everybody! Hi! hi. Come on, guys! Hi! Come on! Come on. Cheer it! Cheer it up! That's Mike. Blythe's ex. What's wrong with him? So, my car has been stolen, I just went to the parking lot, and lo and behold, my parking spot's empty. I called the police and they said that they'd be over as soon as they can. Awesome. They found my car, it was parked a half a block away. I have no idea how it got there. That's my building, and this is where my car is parked. All I can think is my disembodied friend, but I'd have to see that one to believe it. Quick morning update before work. I thought I put my clothes in the basket last night, but now they're lying on the floor. But again, I can't really remember, so I'm just going to assume it was me and just get ready for work. Okay, work was pretty good. It's always awkward your first day. You don't know anyone, you don't know where anything is, you feel pretty much useless. But it was actually pretty okay. The people there seem really nice. That's Oliver. Oliver! Nice. What you doing? Um, I'm working. Bye. Bye. This time, it definitely wasn't me. When I went to the store, these books were in the bookshelf in my bedroom, and now they're stacked on my coffee table. I was just sitting on the couch watching TV when I swear to fucking God, I heard a voice whisper, come here from down the hall. Oh God, this is freaky. Okay. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. Okay, it must have been nothing. It might have just been somebody talking out in the hall. Thanks. Hmm. Oh, that's good, that's good. Do you like being on camera? Well, it's okay, I guess. Kind of. How long have you worked here? Three years and change, I'd say. Yeah? You like it? Yeah, it's it's nice. I mean, everybody's been nice to me, and uh, I, guess, I guess I've been doing pretty well. You live nearby? Closer to the north side. I just got off work. You have to hear this. My mom called and she left a message. Listen, I hope you can hear this. Hi, Genesis. Call. It sounds like my dad, but on my mom's phone. I tried calling back, but there was no answer, and her mailbox is full. Shit. Another cop car just drove by. I don't know if I'm being paranoid, but I think they're following me. I'm starting to see cop cars everywhere. I wonder if Blythe has something to do with all this. 
or Melinda or Dan or my mom. Fuck. I think my mom's ignoring me too. She was always really good at returning text messages or phone calls the day of or the next day at most. But she still hasn't replied. I heard people at work talk about going out for drinks, which is really good news if they hang out outside of work because maybe I can go along with them and meet some new friends. Oh shit. is going on? Genesis? Oh, oh hi. Uh, is your power out? No. Oh, mine just shut off all of a sudden. Oh, call the emergency maintenance. Oh yeah, right. Okay. Good luck. Yeah, thanks. Okay, so the power's back on. Hopefully it was just a maintenance issue and hopefully it doesn't happen again. Also, Maybe I'm just being nosy, but where was Mrs. Pearson going? It's 1.30 in the morning. <laughs> she must have a more exciting life than me. Just for the hell of it, I left my camera running in the living room all day while I was at work, just to see if I could catch anything, and check this out. Okay, look at this. Is that guy looking up at my apartment? What is it with freaky dudes staring at me? Is this paranormal related or just creepy ass stalker dude related? <sighs> Doesn't look like the same guy from the St. Patty's parking lot. <laughs> Think I should wave at him? Hello, weird dude. Wave back at me. Uh, no, buddy, don't come towards me. Oh shit, is he coming up here? Maybe he lives in the building? Oh my god, why did I have to wave? Oh shit. Oh my god. Oh, fuck. Oh. oh, come on, Genesis. He doesn't know you. He can't know where you live. Then again, crazy dude number one didn't know where I lived either. Oh shit, I can't take this. Even if he wanted to come in, he has to be buzzed in. If he has a key, it means he lives here, right? Oh, why am I still watching this? I don't know how long he was outside my apartment for. I I hid in the bathroom when I called the cops, and of course, when they showed up, he was gone. So, I don't know. Uh, he was saying something while he was outside my apartment, but I couldn't make out what he was saying. The cops searched the whole neighborhood, but couldn't find him. I told them about that other guy I saw in the hall, and they said that they talked to building security because they're the ones who dealt with that case. Like. Seriously, is this even paranormal? Like, was the boy a ghost and the older man real, or are they all ghosts? Like, what the fuck is going on? Look. What do I do? Is it a ghost or is it real? Better get this on camera. Gotta be brave. Can't let this thing scare me.
So that means it was a ghost then? The silver lining is that ghosts can't hurt you. Human beings can. I was pretty much a zombie at work all today, which sucked. Oliver is coming over tomorrow night to watch a movie, so we'll see how that goes. <laughs> I came home and found this on the video. How about you just fuck off, little girl? Oliver, say hi! Hi! <laughs> How come you're always filming me? What, don't like the attention? I feel like a movie star. <laughs> That pretty much went horribly. We just watched a movie and we were sitting on the couch talking. He just went to the bathroom and then suddenly came out saying he has to go because he works in the morning. We work at the same place in case anyone forgot. Then he just ran all the way to his car. Like what the fuck? It's like everybody's being driven out of my life lately. What's that? Nothing out of the ordinary. Must have been outside, I guess. Okay, check this out. That wasn't there when I got in the shower. Like, is it trying to spell die, but it's just a bad speller? Like, what the fuck? It might just be the thing trying to communicate with me, which I'm not supposed to respond to, so I didn't. Anyways, I'm, I'm off to work now. Hopefully things aren't too awkward with Oliver. Work was weird. Oliver avoided me the whole day. Like, I, I'm pretty sure I didn't do anything to, to offend him, so... Something must have happened to him last night. That was Mrs. Pearson. What the hell is that about? I thought maybe I'd go and ask her, but... She'd probably find it was weird that I was filming her, and she'd probably tell the landlord. <sighs> Great. Just the utensil drawer opening, on its own, again. It's funny how I just get so desensitized to this kind of stuff that it seems normal. So, I was just eating supper, and I came back into my room, and look. If it's gonna rip the sheets off of my bed, it might as well just do the fucking laundry. It just suddenly got really cold in here. And quiet. What the hell is going on? That was weird. I looked out my bedroom window and saw the scary looking woman floating there. She looked like like the witch from Snow White or something. Scared the shit out of me. Couldn't have been a real woman looking in either because I'm on the 13th floor. Oliver's talking with the boss. I wonder what they're talking about. I was late for work this morning. I got in a shit. I didn't fall asleep till 5 a.m. and I forgot to set my alarm. I better not get fired. Anyways, uh, I drew a picture of what that scary woman looked like. Imagine seeing this in your window in the middle of the night. Oh my god, I was just taking a shower and a fucking hand came and pushed on the shower curtain and tried to fucking grab me. <laughs> I could see fingers on it and everything. It touched me! Fuck! 
This changes everything. It touched me. If it can touch me, it can hurt me. Oh. Oh, I think I'm gonna have to go to a priest. Oh God. Did you hear that? I'm gonna go record this. Hold on. Dan? Dan! Dan didn't attack me or anything. It was weird. He, he hugged me. And he had this look of sadness in his eyes. And then he just turned around and walked out. So I followed him and I asked him what's going on, but he didn't say a word. I begged him to just say something, but he just got on the elevator and held his hand out to stop me from getting on. I remember a while ago I gave Dan a set of spare keys to my apartment just for emergencies, so I guess that explains on how he got in. Now I've changed my locks. <laughs> There was also this, this brown mark on the wall, like a handprint. I got a picture of it. It washed off pretty easily. Uh, oh, there's also, you know, banging and knocking on the walls. <laughs> Again. And, oh my goodness, I am just so fucking paranoid every time I go to take a shower. I just leave the shower curtain open now. I just jump in, rinse off, and jump out. So I woke up this morning and found this on my bed. I take this as a threat. If it can bring this into my room in the middle of the night, what's stopping it from stabbing me? So I texted Blythe and asked her if she wanted to meet and she texted back right away and said sure. So she's on our way over. This should be interesting. There she comes. So nervous, I have no idea how this is gonna go. How have you been? Good as can be, I guess. How have you been? Not too good, I guess you could say. Your apartment's haunted. Yeah. Uh, you could say that. Mine too. Really? Yeah been going on. It was me. I did it. I was pissed off at you and I set a curse on you. Ted, the guy from the seance, he showed me how to do it. That thing with the twigs? Yeah, I put it in here. I, I snuck in when you went down to do laundry and you left your door unlocked. I'm sorry. Was that my hair? Yeah. I cut it off that time that you stayed at my house. You said you were getting your hair cut the next day so I didn't think you'd notice. Well, I found it, and I threw it in the river, but shit's still happening. Getting rid of it won't help. I had to burn your hair and say your name and a bunch of other ritual things. It basically releases the demon, and it attaches itself to you. It said it wasn't a demon. It lies. But, but I don't think I did it right. Weird things have been happening at my house, so I think I released it on myself, too. I don't know what it is or how to control it or get rid of it. It's been attacking me. Look. Oh my god. I've been trying everything to get rid of it, but nothing works. Sometimes I burn sage and it makes it stop for a little bit, but it always comes back. Okay, so can't you contact that Ted guy and ask him how to, how to get rid of it? I would, if he hadn't committed suicide. Shit. Yeah. Hung himself from a pipe in the basement of his parents' house. Oh my god, that's horrible. Well, I, I contacted a paranormal investigator, but she didn't seem to help. So, so I'm thinking of calling a priest. It might be worth a shot, but if you're not religious, it might make it worse. Yeah, that's what Adeline said. But I'm getting desperate. <laughs> so am I. Maybe if we... I don't know what happened. The camera just stopped recording. I think we mended our friendship somewhat, probably more so out of loneliness than anything else. I don't think either of us have anyone else. 
Well, you know, you might as well have a friend, even after all she's done to me. <laughs> I called the Catholic Church and asked them about getting a priest to come by to bless my apartment. They said that they'd see who's available and that they'd keep in touch. Okay, so I got a call back from the church. They said Father Leonard can come over tomorrow at 1. At 1. I just really hope he can help. Honestly, it feels kind of weird to be having a priest coming over. I'm actually, I'm actually pretty nervous about it. But uh, Christmas is coming up next week. I have a pretty good feeling I'm going to be spending it alone. Well, maybe not totally alone. What's going on with Oliver? He's either on drugs or having a seizure. I just buzzed the priest in. It doesn't feel right recording him, so I'll switch off and let you guys know how it goes afterwards. <sighs> okay. I'm not sure that's gonna work, but I hope so. All he did was walk around sprinkling holy water and saying some prayer. So the church called me again. They asked if the priest stopped by because apparently he never returned and they can't reach him. I told them he came and blessed the house then left. So I don't know what to think about that. Okay, Oliver just quit. Bye, Oliver. Oh my god. The police came over again. This time they were asking about the priest. I guess they still can't find him. I told them. He came over and left, and I have no idea where he went. Here we are, the ghost sisters. Ghost the sisters. <laughs> because of the iconic red hair. And yeah. Also I wonder if like being haunted is like a requirement, <gasps> like red hair is a requirement for being haunted. You know how they yeah. say that, well, we're witches because we have red hair? Yeah, exactly. That's what it is. That's what it is. <laughs> if you can't have red hair, you're cursed. Game over. Yeah, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I hung out with Blythe again tonight. We went to the bar for a bit and then hung out in the park behind some school. She had a joint, so I got high for the first time in a while. It felt really good to hang out with her again. It feels like everything's back to normal for us. I've forgiven her for everything, and she seems more normal too, not going through that weird phase she was going through. So I woke up this morning to this written on my laptop. So apparently this thing can type, and apparently it's a really bad speller. <laughs> I'm tempted to write back, but I know I'm not supposed to communicate with it. Things have escalated. I sat on my bed to put on some socks and a hand reached out from underneath and grabbed my ankle. Lesson learned. Priests don't work. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I guess I'll go for a walk. Great news! I got fired! Not because I called in sick, but because the fucking police showed up asking about me. My boss said, oh, we don't know what's going on in your personal life, but we can't have this going on around here. Wow. Thanks a lot, police. Getting me fired from my job when I did absolutely nothing wrong. Honestly, I should just move my mattress onto the floor and get rid of my bed frame. That way nothing can grab me from underneath it. Still too scared to sleep in my room. Even now, I'm just thinking, what if something comes crawling out of it? I went out with Blythe again tonight. We actually had a lot of fun, just like old times. I finally told her about all these videos I'm making. She said she's gotten some pretty scary stuff on camera too, but she liked the idea of keeping a daily record of things. So she said she might start doing the same. Okay, so looks like me and Genesis worked our shit out. She's been making videos of all these crazy demonic things that are happening, and I dis she says it's helping her deal with it, so I decided I would do the same. So, my boyfriend Mike broke up with me. 
It was either because the demon did something to scare him or Genesis interfered. She says she didn't, but I'm not so sure. She said I was being a bitch to him and that I should stop seeing him, which totally isn't true, by the way. And then she went and met up with him, which is how this whole fight started. And no, I wasn't stalking her. I just tend to overreact when I'm mad sometimes. Genesis has her faults too. So, for the record, this is entirely my fault. I'm the one who sicked the demon on Genesis and it totally backfired. Honestly, I didn't even think it would work. It was just something amusing for me to do. But somehow the demon started haunting me too. And just like Genesis, my whole life has become slamming doors and opening cupboards and knocking on walls and disembodied voices and all that inconvenient crap. Oh my god, it sounds like a fucking dog. Go away! Life. Merry Christmas, everyone. This is my Christmas present. How the fuck did this happen? Was it the ghost dog or something else? So I was just eating lunch and then this piano started playing all on its own. Maybe it will again. Let's wait. No. Oh my gosh. The other one is playing. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. It's four in the morning. I was passed out and I just woke up and my cross is missing. It was around my neck when I went to sleep. Now it's gone. Mike's new girl. sitting in my apartment watching television and I paused it to get a snack and then all of a sudden I heard this voice say my name it was like lies come here and I ran out of the house I was so scared so I'm gonna go for a walk and I will get back to you and update you on how it goes there she is what is she doing here camera video evidence for the cops unless in case you try to attack me okay i'm not here to attack you <sighs> something's wrong with mike did you do something i didn't do anything to mike can you, can you turn the camera off please just had a long talk with mike's new girlfriend june and it sounds like he's behaving really weird and experiencing the same things that me and genesis are going through so I think the demon attached itself to Mike, which probably means it'll attach itself to June. Wow, this whole thing's spreading like an STI. Well, world, you're welcome. Blythe is dead. Hey, Blythe's sister posted it yesterday. That's how I found out. She said they don't know what happened yet, and it's being investigated, but the family wants privacy. I've come to a decision. I'm going to try to communicate with this thing. It can't get worse, and maybe I can figure out what it wants and how to get it to leave. I have to do it, and looks like I'm going to be on my own. Blythe's sister dropped by and left me Blythe's laptop. Apparently, Blythe left a note saying that if anything happened to her, she wanted me to have it. Sounds like Blythe knew she was going to die. Okay, check this out. 
The knocking started again, and I knocked back. It took a few minutes, but it finally started responding. Are you still there? Can I ask you a couple of questions? Cool. Is today Friday? Is today Monday? Are you mad I brought a priest here? If I agree to never bring a priest here again, will you leave me alone? Well, maybe I'll bring a priest here again then. You wouldn't like me to do that? Then leave me alone. You're not being reasonable. Do priests scare you? Then why don't you like them? Oh, right. Uh, can they hurt you? Can they get rid of you? Do you hate them? Is it something personal? That priest who came over, is he dead? Did you kill him? Was he, was he murdered? Do you have something to do with my friend Blythe's death? Were you haunting her too? Was she murdered? Did she kill herself? Did you hear me? Did she kill herself? <sighs> Are you refusing to answer that question because you don't want to? Fine. <sighs> Did you do something to the scare that guy, Oliver, who came over? Did you do something to scare Dan? Is that a yes? Look, I want to talk to you, but I need a way that we can communicate that's more than just yes or no's. Oh, if I ask you a question and you answer in a series of knocks, like, like one for A, two for B, three for C, and so on, is that possible? Okay, 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 hold on. Um, I'll go get a pen. Okay, so what's your name? C-Y-R? Seer? That's your name? I'll read you some of my notes. This is honestly some pretty freaky shit. There's a lot of misspelled words and things that don't make sense, but... Here's what I got. Okay, so I asked it first, why are you haunting me? It said, I need you. I asked what that meant. It said, I don't know. That's something I noticed. It had a hard time answering questions that were even the slightest bit hard, like anything that took thought. It was like talking to a two-year-old. So I asked it, why did you pick me? It said, you pick. So I guess that means I was picked? I don't know. I asked, was it because of the thing Blythe left with my hair? It had one knock, which I take to mean yes. I asked how long it'll keep messing with me. It said, eternal. I asked it if it was a person who used to be alive. It said falling. I asked what that meant. It said calm call, which I think it was trying to say comical. So I asked it to knock yes or no and asked it again, are you a human that used to be alive? And it said no. So I asked, how old are you? 
there were 26 knocks, which is either meaning that it is 26 years old or the letter Z, which doesn't really make sense. I tried to clarify, but I couldn't really get a clear response. I asked, do you have anything to do with the scary guys coming to my apartment? And it said, slightly. I asked if there will be more, and it said no. I asked who the little boy was. There were nine knocks, which is I, so I guess it means it really was him. Honestly, I feel better now that I know I can talk to it. I feel like I have some sort of control now. Maybe I can even reason with it. It did keep its promise about letting me sleep all night. Hi, Seer. Maybe that'll go try to talk to it, get some answers out of it. The sun is rising, and once again, I spent the entire night talking to a demon. I'll just read you guys the more interesting parts. I asked it what, it what its gender was, and it said many. I don't know if that meant to spell man, or if it meant many, like many entities, like the whole legion thing. And then suddenly it said pop. I didn't know what that meant, so I asked it to clarify, but it didn't answer. I asked it if it hates me. It said once, which I also didn't answer, so I asked it to clarify with yes or no knocks. It answered with one knock, so I guess that means it hates me. I asked it why it hates me. It said insignificant, which is honestly the most complicated word it said yet, and it actually spelled it all correctly. <laughs> I asked, what do you get out of destroying my life? It said eat. So I guess it does feed off of negative energy. I asked if it could leave me alone again so I could sleep, and it said yes. So apparently Blythe died of heart failure. However, this is her last video. I'm really looking forward to moving in with Genesis. I've already started to pack. I know this thing will probably follow us and even be twice as strong if we're together. So I'm thinking about getting baptized. I, it might not work, but at this point I'm willing to try anything. <laughs> even becoming a religious freak. <laughs> Okay, this is bad. This is really bad. That fucking thing said it would leave me alone, but as I was trying to sleep, I felt something jump on my bed and start choking me. It pushed me again. Stop it, stop it, Seer, or, or whatever your name is. Damn. Oh, it just fucking touched my neck. So, I ran out of my apartment and that fucking thing followed me. I could feel hands pushing me while I was walking on the street. It followed me everywhere. It even tried shoving me out onto the road. I ran into this church to get away from Seer. He hasn't been grabbing me, so I guess it worked. They left the doors to this place unlocked. I hope I don't get caught, but I think I'm going to sleep here tonight. It's morning. I think I hear someone. I gotta get out of here. I guess it can't be trusted after all. Life was right. It's a fucking liar. I can't believe they thought I was gonna be friends with it. That religious thing might work though. It really hated that priest and it didn't follow me into the church. It said it wasn't scared of the priest, but maybe it was just lying so I wouldn't bring one back. Maybe if I give it an ultimatum. It'll leave me alone. Okay, listen up, Seer. I'm tired of your shit. You leave now or I'm calling another priest to come and bless the house. You don't want me to call a priest? Then leave now and never come back. You can't have it both ways. I know you hate the religious stuff, so I'm going to use it to torture you. 
Maybe I'll sing a song about Jesus. Would you like that? No? Jesus was a little lamb who spread his word across the land. He had a robe and he had a beard and a father in heaven whom Satan feared. I'm going to keep singing and I'm calling the priest unless you stop. He's here. I think he's willing to talk. Are you ready to talk? Are you going to be nice and do as I say? All right, then this is the way it's going to be. I want you gone. Is there a way to do that? Good. How? That was a frustrating conversation. But there may be an end in sight. He told me he'd leave me alone if I passed him on to someone else, like Blythe did to me. So I need to get a sample of someone's hair, burn it, wrap it around some twigs, say that weird shit Blythe told me, and hide it in someone's home. Easier said than done, since I don't have any living friends, and I'm not currently associating with any members of the human race. Mrs. Pearson. I gotta go for a bit. Need to think. You leave me alone, or I'll start singing again. There's Mrs. Pearson. I'm gonna go help her with her groceries. Hey guys, I have a surprise. Look what I got. I saw Mrs. Pearson unloading groceries from her car, and I offered to help. When I was dropping them off in her apartment, I snagged her keys from her purse. Okay. It's three in the morning. Time to go cut me some hair. That was intense. I felt like a night prowler or something. Fuck off, Seer. It's done. I stood in her living room and recited the creepy Latin chant thing Blythe told me. Then I hid the object in her storage room. Oh, I hope I got the words right. Blythe told me it's not so much the words or the object. It's the intent behind them. So, I hope to God it works. Hey guys, it's been a few days. I hope you're all doing well. Everything is perfectly calm here. No paranormal business. I think Sears gone for good. And last night, as I left my apartment, I passed by Mrs. Pearson's apartment and I could hear banging and other stuff from within, like someone was pounding on the walls. Oh well, <laughs> better her than me. I found a new apartment. It's a one bedroom in Capilano. I am so excited to leave this place behind. And above all that, I'm cutting out everybody who's had anything to do with this nightmare. Dan, my mom, Melinda, Mike. I feel really fresh. Like This is gonna be the new me. And thank you so, so much for supporting me and for following me on this journey. It was so nice to just have some... <gasps> oh!